true? Is, is George really dead? Yes, the Spanish flu, I'm afraid. I never really cared for the mean, arrogant bastard, but I am sad to see him go. Albert, if your eldest brother dead, that means... That I am to inherit everything once dear grandmama dies? Yes. Oh, five million pounds. Good God, you'll be richer than Midas. Quite so. <laughs> and would you be willing to share that wealth with the less fortunate? What on earth do you mean by that? I mean, it's only fair after all we've shared together. I get an even cut of your inheritance. Half my inheritance? <laughs> you must be mad. Not mad, just clever. What makes you think you'll see a dime of that money? Because if you don't, I'll tell your grandmother everything. You wouldn't dare. Such a scandal could ruin us both. All the more reason to just give me the money so our little trice last summer stayed between us. This is blackmail. I will not stand for it. <laughs> Are you getting it? <laughs> With that. <laughs> well, come on then. Come on. I want to see if you can stab me. <laughs> no, Charles. No, come on. <laughs> <laughs> What do I do? What do I do? Oh, Boy, oh. Albert! You have company, sir! Okay. Um. <laughs> I was thinking perhaps Saturday. Uh, maybe a luncheon? Ah, yes. That will do quite nicely. But you must do what you would do well to always be on your guard from now on. I'm not quite sure what you mean. You are to inherit everything, my dear boy. Such a large inheritance would make you a most notable bachelor now. I suppose that's true. Yeah, you keep a sharp eye on now, boy. The vultures will descend soon enough, particularly your cousins, Edmund and Elizabeth. <laughs> Dear Elizabeth, why, certainly not her. Last I saw her, she was of such a sweet disposition. Perhaps when you saw her ten years ago, she was, but time had turned her into a brazen fool. Oh, Grandma, you exaggerate. I most certainly do not. I assure, I assure you, a more vacuous woman has never drawn breath. Be warned, she is not a woman you would want to marry. Besides, I've been having rather revolutionary thoughts on marriage. And that would be? I am beginning to believe that it might be a bad idea for people to marry their cousins. <laughs> Grandma, you stun me. I'm quite the revolutionary, you know. I'm also starting to believe that servants might have feelings. <laughs> you don't say. Yeah, I know, I know. Your grandfather once accused me of being a communist when I suggested he allow the servants to have two hours off on Christmas instead of one. <laughs> Grandma, your generosity warms my soul. Well, my age has made me wise, my boy. So, hear this. <laughs> I know this is not what you were expecting. And as the younger son, this is not the life you were born to live. However, you are an age, what? And that great responsibility now rests on your shoulders, and I have great confidence that you will bring honor to this family. 
<laughs> Good. Well, there is much to prepare for. Your cousin shall be arriving soon. I shall go help that maid of yours prepare the house for guests. <laughs> that that should be necessary. What a friend! Come take my coat! Oh, no, Company no. is going and I must make haste! Don't worry, you win a friend. With that, I, I shall um, grab your coat. Grandma, there's so, so much work to be done, you know. Thank you, Albert. <laughs> 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 My cutlery are scarce. As a bachelor, I rarely host parties in my own lodgings. Well, fortunately, ever since I became a widow, I've kept a, kept a full set of pudding spoons on my desk. <laughs> Be a dear, ladies out. Thank you. <laughs> Someone is at the door, my lord. I shall do them in. You mean bring them in? Yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Bertie! It's so good to see you! Dear cousin, how wonderful to see you again! Grandpa! <laughs> Do that to me, and you'll snap my damn spine in half! It's a good thing I brought along a man of medicine to help with any ailments that may distress you. May I present my good friend, Dr. John Miller. Oh, great Countess Ainsworth! What an honor it is to be in your presence and to dine under the light of such a radiant woman! How very gracious of you! <laughs> However, I am the Dowager Countess, as my husband has passed on! Oh, my apologies! Um, well, I'm sure that he was a true and noble countryman who is now smiling down upon your family from the, uh, the kingdom of heaven! I highly doubt he made it up there! <laughs> <laughs> My lord! I have never known such honor, such pure pleasure as I have being allowed within the walls of your noble abode today! I hope that one day I'll be even the tidiest bit worthy of standing before your noble, masculine presence. <laughs> <laughs> Not all of us can survive on patriotism and summons from Fordyce like you do. Oh dear Elizabeth, how wonderful to see you again. Good to see you, my cousin. I mean, my lord. <laughs> <laughs> and can you find me much changed? I spent many years in France doing arts like embroidery and painting and the arts of the good. <laughs> So, Bertie, when are you moving into Greycrest Hall? Oh, I've heard that it's one of the finest residences in the country, a domain of grace and luxury, akin to the Garden of Eden. It seems far too large for just me. I think I shall remain here for now. Nonsense! Greycrest Hall is the home of the head of the family! You must move there! Once you've found yourself a wife and had a dozen heirs, the place will seem much smaller. When your grandfather and I lived there, the place felt like a broom closet! <laughs> I agree with Grandmama. You must find yourself an agreeable wife to brighten up the place. <laughs> you must watch out for ghosts, my lord. <laughs> That's the rub, 
with such great family, centuries of bloodshed, both kin and servant, the wretched souls of those fallen before the quest of great nobility, forever down to haunt the castles that stand monument to the empire. <laughs> Those of us burdened with living must forever follow the trail of the blood and slaughter to keep the balance to serve a judge, jury, and executioner <laughs> to those who hold up this cycle of damnation. <laughs> burdened with the grim reaper whispering. <laughs> into our ears as we lay awake at night, dreaming of the kill that will liberate us from our chains. <laughs> well, that's damn creepy. <laughs> yes, that put quite a chill down my spine. I think I shall go fetch my coat. Yes. So, Albert, what size bed do you currently have? <laughs> queen, king. It's a queen. Alaskan king. Where's Alaska? <laughs> Why don't you find out? And the chief of Alaska is either. Ah! She's so dramatic. <gasps> oh, ladies, you must bring it! What? Let me go! Perform a complete examination. <laughs> but her reflexes are weak. What kind of doctor is he? Oh, he's a, a specialist. Um, God, I, I can't remember the word now. He's the, the type of doctor you see for male issues. He's a urologist. <laughs> now I must check for a blockage in her airway. My good man, perhaps we should call another doctor, as this is not your area of expertise. My lord. How I went to medical school. Behold my knowledge. The anal canal. The throat. Potato. Potato. Dr. Doctor, it's probably like the anal canal. Uh, what if the chicken see if there's something that gave her a fright and caused her to faint? Yes, Wilfred, did you see anything odd when you found her? Well, uh, there was a dead body on the floor, my lord. What? <laughs> I shall inspect the cadaver immediately! <laughs> Are you dead yet? <laughs> Did you leave me a lot of money? <laughs> you wish! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen! <laughs> I am a man of science. I have dedicated my life to solving the world's greatest mysteries and to understanding every nook and cranny of the human body. <laughs> Decades of study now allow me to say with complete confidence, there has been a murder! <laughs> Well, I agree with the doctor. This man is very dead and I don't think it was an accident. <laughs> no, I can't fathom such a thing, the horror, the absolute horrific scandal this shall bring to the family. Did, did you know him, Bertie? <laughs> um, uh, yes, uh, he was a colleague of mine. Uh, <laughs> but the last I saw of him was when he came to give his condolences about George. Winifred! Uh, Jenkins! Have you seen him recently? Oh no, sir, not at all. I, I've always got two eyes, two ears, and a nose on this one. <laughs> I don't take kindly to men who are rude to butlers such as I. I can't begin to tell you the number of times I've wanted to wring his scrawny little neck. <laughs> well, thank you, Jenkins. <laughs> <laughs> but why is he dead in your house? What an awfully rude thing to do. <laughs> I, I, I can't imagine. I can't imagine having the impropriety as to be stabbed in another's home. No, I don't think he had much of a choice, Canramar. <laughs> of course.
seen in. I would have used my dying breath to crawl, crawl out onto the street. What if I were to be killed in the home of a lesser family? I can't hold a residence that only has ten bedrooms. Don't worry, Grandma. If you're dying here meant that you would haunt my residence for all eternity, I would throw your dying body out onto the street myself. <laughs> Thank you, Albert. You have always been such a sweet boy. <laughs> Can we please get back to the important question at hand? How did he die here? Albert, darling, do you have any hypotheses on the matter? Uh, well, I... Come, uh, come, man. You knew him, and he died in your home. Surely you must know something. Uh, I, I Bertie, think... don't stutter. Tell us what you know. Uh, Someone's at the door, my lord. I shall bring them in. <laughs> no, the lady. Sorry. Oh. It was the case. And you are? Why? I am the internationally famous, world-renowned, award-winning, top of my class graduate from detective school, Sir Achilles Armstrong. Sent here from Scotland Yard on behalf of His Majesty the King to solve this most gruesome mystery. Detective Armstrong! Why, weren't you knighted by the king for solving the murder of the French ambassador? Indeed I was. Is it true that you punched Jack the Ripper in the face? It is, and I would gladly punch you too if you would like. Detective, <laughs> <laughs> it's such an honor to have you here. I'm sure you'll have a, this whole affair wrapped up in no time. My lady, I assure you, the pleasure is all mine. <laughs> Detective Armstrong! I am Dr. John Miller of Oxford University. I have dedicated my life to solving the world's most heinous mysteries. And now I implore you to allow me to assist you in your deductive endeavors. Hmm. Hmm. Well, there's nothing I respect more than a man who dedicates his life to the art of detective reasoning and logic. I accept your answer and dub the assistant detective, Dr. Miller. Now, lords and ladies, I have worked on hundreds, nay, thousands, nay, billions of cases around the world, and I have solved every last one. Allow me to assure you that I will leave no room unexamined. Every molecule will be seen by my eye. Yes! <laughs> we shall be down at the time! <laughs> oh. Um. Right, where is the man of this house? You there. Come out. You are Lord Ainsworth, are you not? <laughs> Speak up, man. There's been a fucking murder. <laughs> my Lord, allow me to give you my most solemn oath that I will solve this mystery by the end of the night. I can assure you that this terrible, awful, heinous, gut-wrenching, despicable murderer will be caught. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and when he is caught, I shall write to the king myself and personally request that as punishment for bringing scandal to this family, the man be hanged, drawn, quartered, drowned, and burned! <laughs> My lady, now, everyone, I require your utmost cooperation in order to solve this mystery. I ask that you all remain in your rooms until I need you further. I will inspect every room, every single one of you, turn out all of your pockets, and open every single drawer in this household. Assistant Detective Dr. Miller, with me.
<laughs> it was an accident. I mean, I assumed as much. I had strong doubts that my boss, who wakes me up at 2 a.m. to kill the spider in the corner, uh -huh. would summon the courage to kill a man. <laughs> oh, God. What am I going to do? There's a detective, and a, a good one. I'm going to jail. Or, or my grandmother is going to have me hanged and drawn and quartered and... Ah! Not that bad. Not bad. Not that bad? <laughs> my boyfriend is dead. I'm the one that killed him. My brother is dead. And now I have to run my batch crazy family and live in a, a haunted castle. My grandmother wants me to find a wife. <laughs> And my cousin is attempting to fill that position. <laughs> you do have some fair points. Uh, I would take prison before marrying my cousin. So maybe the murderer problems will fix the family ones. You're not being helpful. <laughs> oh, now, all we have to do is pin the murder on someone else. Wait, you're, you're going to help me cover it up? Of course I am! This is the best job I've ever had! <laughs> I only have to do any work since you're such a lonely lover, man. Plus, you know, the whole only friend thing makes me compelled to help you. Winnie, I'm your only friend? Why, that is Oh, so absolutely not! I am your only friend! <laughs> <laughs> Why, that is... Where are they? Fair! <laughs> Listen, buddy, the plan is simple. We just need to find someone to take the fall. But how could we do such a thing? Who could possibly be a believable suspect and be worthy of a life in prison? I could never do such a wretched thing. Oh, I could! Easy! <clears throat> Jenkins! Jenkins! Such a kind and gentle soul. <laughs> <laughs> yes, three reasons. One! Suppose so. What other choice do I have? It's decided. We will take the murder weapon and plant it in his room. Murder mates? <laughs> murder mates. Oh, this is gonna be loads of fun! Let's go! Yeah, fun! <laughs> letter opener, it's used- It's a fancy fucking pen, but you didn't even use a knife. You know, <laughs> some say that the pen is mightier than the salt. <laughs> <laughs> Just shut the hell up and give it to me, you insufferable goose. You know, you don't need to be so mean to me. Just because I'll help you cover up a murder, doesn't mean you get to bully. Come, my good man. Now we the wrong way. We must inspect every corner of every room for clues. <laughs> Splendid, sir. I say, when we do find him, do you think I should be knighted too? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> what are we going to do? How are we going to get out of here without them noticing? If only we had some kind of distraction. Like a... Oh, like a... Yeah. Like that! <laughs> Excuse me, sir. What are you doing so late in the evening? I was just... Fetching the post, sir. <laughs> Fetching the post in the middle of the night? The paper boy is nocturnal. <laughs> I see. And what, pray tell, is this? My laundry, sir. 
May I retire to bed now? You may. I bid you good night. <laughs> <laughs> Now, my dear assistant detective, Dr. Miller, there are times when I am working on a case where I must ask assistants such as yourself to step away from your loyalty to science and deduction and trust in something not of this earth. In fact, on occasion when I work as, on a case such as this, I get a feeling that I cannot quite explain. It's not backed by hard facts or evidence. It's perhaps potentially even divine intervention from God himself. I call this sixth sense my hunch. <laughs> and I have a hunch that Jenkins may be suspicious. <laughs> well, excellent, sir. I shall trust your unparalleled sense of judgment with utmost faith. I shall add him to our list of suspects. Good man. Now, let us sniff every fiber of every carpet for traces of poison. Oh, hurrah! <laughs> What an odd evening. Two deaths in one week. Do you think our family curse? <laughs> Every time there's a family dinner. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think Bertie did it though, do you? Lizzie, he holds a yearly funeral for when the flowers die. I hardly think of a man with a violent disposition. <laughs> <laughs> Quite true. I do wonder who that man is though. It's Charles Eaton. He went to school with Bertie and I. You knew him? Yes, I did. You seem awfully cool for a man who has an old school friend playing dead down the hallway. What aren't you telling me? Nothing. Tell me, come on. Nothing. Lady. Come on, you what? You tell me right now or you're going to What are you going to do? Do you want it? Do you want it? Don't you dare. Not again. I'm never going to let you do that again. Are you going to do it? No. Tell me right now. Never. Money. What? Charles and I were part of the same gentleman's club and I was gambling and he won and I lost and now I have earned 600,000 pounds. 600,000 pounds? How did you manage to lose so much? Well, I didn't realize that gambling involved maths, so <laughs> or keep track or anything. I just put down the cards that I thought looked cool and the next thing I know, I owed a lot of money. <laughs> Eddie, you don't know what this means, don't you? If they find out, they'll think... they'll think you've killed him to erase your debt. I know! Which is why I didn't want to tell anyone. Okay, fine. You know what, here's what we're going to do. We need protection here. What? Um... <laughs> Financial protection. <laughs> Rich and powerful to help keep this little secret from coming to light. And just how are we going to do that, oh brilliant one? It's quite simple. Yes. Albert is rich and titled, and any rich man needs a wife. I shall simply apply for the position. So, your brilliant plan <laughs> is to marry our cousin. Plenty of people marry their cousins. <laughs> and besides, once I use my husband, he'll be honor bound to help me. <laughs> All I have to do is back my eyes and this whole problem will poof, disappear. <laughs> Eddie. Eddie. <laughs> this is so funny. Oh, it's not going to go. <laughs> <laughs> what? what? You, you think oh. I can't seduce him? Oh, really? You, I am so fucking charming and delightful. <laughs> 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 When we were in school, you aren't his type. Believe me, I know. <laughs> he is his type. Oh, well, yes. Since you've such a master plan, I'll let you figure that one out. But I'll give you a hint. They're in this house. <laughs> you just wanted to eat your words, Eddie. By yeah. the time I'm done, I'll save your fat ass and raise my station. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Enough of this indecisive bullshit! Give me the pen and I'll put it in Jenkins' room! It's 
too risky. Detective Armstrong is going over the house with the eye of an eagle. We will be caught. We'll get caught if you don't get rid of it. That's low. <laughs> Just like you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. such a late hour. You know, oh, Albert, I was just so frightened all alone in my room. <laughs> but your, your natural strength is so powerful, it's filling the room. I can feel it <laughs> reviving me as we speak. <laughs> Thank you. From the moment I stepped into this house, I can see what a perfect pair you were. The natural, naturally. We do. Why, well, yes. With my grace, elegance, charm, beauty, and your, um, your intellect and, um, <laughs> charm and a passion for books. <laughs> yes. Uh, right, well, I am quite tired, so I think I'm going to go. No, I would definitely be yes. Oh, but my heart yearns for you. In all my life, I know that a man with such a disposition. Oh. I know that we are meant to be. Oh, my dear cousin, I think you have slightly miscalculated my disposition. <laughs> Proposal. Did he read you poetry? Thank the heavens for your existence. <laughs> Why? To hear such rude words out of the mouth of such a fine lady. Come, <laughs> Sissy. I found a bottle of whiskey under the floorboards and I hear it calling both of us. I get the first shot. <laughs> A moment of peace. broken light bulb in the third floor bathroom, and perhaps, most interestingly, mud <laughs> in the garden. <laughs> How riveting. I know this may all seem trivial but not to the untrained eye, but I assure you, slowly the pages of the story of a damned man are coming together, page by page by page. Great. <laughs> Yes. However, there is one piece of this puzzle that still eludes me. And that is? The murder weapon. <laughs> I can't find it. Oh, no! <laughs> yes, it vexes me so. That's the curse of being a detective. Always working in the shadows and incomplete realities. No case is ever totally solved. Always working, one <laughs> uh -huh. In fact, when I'm on a case, the realities I spin become what is so. 
Men have died at my accusations, and in fact, I have become the truth itself. <sighs> I'm always working to find the truth for someone else. I can never just have it for my own. In fact, mystery is like my mistress, and she is a cruel lover, biting and scratching at my back each night. Like the murder weapons. I see that this man was stabbed, but I do not know how. <laughs> a blunt object? <laughs> Poison? <laughs> a knife? A sword? You see, this clue is especially vital to this case. Weapons are intimate. They reveal the motivations of killers. However, in this case, the motivations to this killer's crime, the windows and the curtains on those windows have been drawn shut. <laughs> it is no matter. I shall find him soon enough. My lord, without this missing clue, I must grasp. I must grasp. I think, Albert. I want to know why this killer kills. But he evades me still. Keep it together. <laughs> I'm afraid for this. It is no matter, though, my lord, I assure you. I shall draw him out of the woodwork. For this man is nothing more than a cockroach. I want his damn soul sent to hell. I want his evil, fucked up little heart sent to prison. <laughs> but soon. I am hot on the trail, my lord, and how shall I find him? In fact, true shall rain hellfire on us all! <laughs> but alas, I suppose some things will never be found. <laughs> oh well. Well, good night, man. Let you know when I find something. <laughs> What a joke this is! <laughs> what a cosmic fucking joke! Huh. Is, God, is God taunting me? <laughs> Mocking me? Making me suffer before he drops the shoe? A detective so close to discovery and I am forced to watch my insufferable family breathing down my neck having to dodge advances from my cousin. <laughs> This is a curse. That it is. There is no other explanation. I'm cursed. Killing Charles left a black spot on my soul that I cannot wash out. That will follow me to the grave and be the anchor that drags me down into the deepest pits of hell. <laughs> or maybe I am in hell. <laughs> maybe I'm being damned to sit here and watch all this for all eternity. Are you there, Charles? <laughs> Can you hear me? You've won. I've taken your life and denied you my fortune, but you've stolen all hope from me. Oh, you've damned me for all eternity. Let your ghost haunt my halls. I do not care. I always knew my love for you was greater than your love for me. Well, if you're going to haunt me, don't be shy about it. Come forward. Show yourself. Come to me. Come to me now. I'm, I'm, I'm ready for face. <laughs> so, rise. Rise, great spirit, and show me your wretched face.
fainted, sir. When I walked in, I thought we had another cold one. <laughs> you had quite the talk. You ought to rest. What on earth could have caused such a response? I... Good God. I have become like Macbeth. <laughs> Mad <laughs> and guilt. Macbeth? I'd faint too if I had to read Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs>
informative. Alas, we still can't find the murder weapon. What could it be? Forgive me if I'm wrong, but could it perhaps be the blood-covered letter of my Begad! How could I have missed it? Sir, it seems your years at Cambridge have provided you with a keen insight that the layman lacks. I shall be forever in your debt. I don't consider it an extraordinary feat. <laughs> Nonsense. Well, my good assistant detective, Dr. Miller, let us go inspect this. I assure you, 
you'll be able to enjoy the opera in peace tonight. For I can promise you, with 100% absolute, utmost, extreme certainty, that the killer is close. Closer than you may think, even. Indeed. <laughs> Please, you must simply talk. <laughs>
would you say we do next? Oh, on with the hunt! Let's see, let's check our... Uh... With the body destroyed, we will have to go back to the list of suspects. Dear Assistant Detective, Assistant Detective, Detective Doctor, Assistant Miller, Detective Assistant Detective Dr. Miller. <laughs> Be so kind as to read me the suspects, please. Of course. Suspect one, Jenkins, the butler. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> does your mysterious hunch still suspect him? Indeed it does. I cannot quite put a finger as to why, but that quirked up butler does compel me so. <laughs> but how would we progress on this investigation? Well, Assistant Detective Dr. Miller, I have some good fucking news for you. You see, there's been an exciting advancement in the field of forensic science. Each individual has a unique whirl and swirl upon their fingertips that no other man has. And when a man touches that object, it leaves an imprint of that whirl and swirl upon said object. And then, here comes the kicker. When you spread it with dust, that print becomes discernible to the human eye. Now what I say is that I propose that I believe what we should do <laughs> is match the fingerprint on the murder weapon to everyone in this house, and then we will have found the killer. Oh, brilliant! I know. <laughs> well, what you said? On with the hunt! <laughs> He was mean, that's a fact. He always treated me like an idiot. 
He never spoke well of anyone around him, and he bullied and manipulated Albert into submission, and I'm glad he's dead. Oh, really? <laughs> Every murderer behind bars. <laughs> Every case but one! 
Always that damn Jack the Ripper, eluding me, evading me. It's so... <laughs> but you punched him in the nose once. That's got to count for something. That's true, I did. But then he gave me the slip and I lost him again. <laughs> Every night I lay awake, dreaming of the way my chiseled fist felt against his punchable nose. <laughs> what good will that do? <laughs> I suppose not much. <laughs> I took this case because I, I thought it'd be such an easy one. <laughs> Thank you. I just thought it would be so easy and I would solve it and everything would be peachy keen and it would lift my spirits, but I can't even solve a simple fucking whodunit. What a piece of shit I've become! <laughs> I thought you said the killer was Edmund. I thought that would be the truth, but then I inspected the murder weapon closer and I, I, I came to a terrible conclusion. And that was? His stupid fucking manly hands are too big for the wide opener! <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to lose my composure like that. It's just. The ladder opener is so small, and in order to wield it like a knife, you would need to just have dainty, small, minuscule, even pathetic hands. <laughs> I'm 
if you go on that date with me, right? I wouldn't have said yes if you had just asked. I already told you I liked you. You didn't even take it off the off for me, did you? <laughs> and I'm an idiot for the date. Oh. Oh. Did anyone find the letter? No, we couldn't find it anywhere. Damn it, we've searched everywhere. Everyone get in the kitchen right now! I'm sniffing out this fucking killer! <laughs> 
I must request of you to remove your gloves. What a scandalous idea! I haven't removed my gloves in over 50 years! <laughs> <laughs> Certainly you must take them off to sleep or to bathe. What a suggestion! As if I would be so wanton as to take off my gloves for the bath! <laughs> Do you bathe fully clothed, <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. I may have completely nude aside from the gloves. <laughs> <laughs> what exactly is going on? Science and, and justice. Lots of fucking justice. <laughs> Fingerprint every one of you until I figure out who the killer is. Detective, surely the ladies are beyond suspect. Bullshit! Everyone in this house is a suspect. Even the... Even the, even the spiders! Assistant Detective Dr. Miller! Yes, sir. I want you to round up every spider in this house and fingerprint them! Excuse me, sir, but I don't believe spiders have fingers, nor fingerprints for that matter. Oh, so suddenly you're a spider doctor now! Well, I don't give a damn. Just round up the spiders and put whatever the bottom of the legs is! Oh, that's right! All right, who's next? Jenkins, get over here! Uh, let me think. No. <laughs> Excuse me. Are you deaf? I said no thank you, sir. I'm not going to give you my fingerprints. Did I stutter? Get your fat ass over here, Jenkins. <laughs>
that I am ready to depart. I have had quite enough assignments. I have had enough shock to last a lifetime. I'm not saying you, Grandma. Ellie, just go. And actually, I have one more surprise. <laughs> Grandma, this is it. This is Willie. And we're getting married. What? <laughs> Bye, James. Best of luck. <laughs> 